good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're feeling good this evening or this afternoon. It's a good afternoon. I like the bright spots here. But I'm just right here all happy with this wonderful gentleman, Nathan Turner, who's actually a Canadian note guy. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Hey, it's awesome to see you. I'm so grateful to understand that you're the expert in mortgage. And mortgage note investing. It's a little bit of a different uh, approach to investments, but... I really like it. It's really fun. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, if you're going to be teaching us some more angles about <laughs> what the yeah. investing portion, we would love to be under understanding and keeping up the good love. Excellent. Yeah, I'm happy to share. Oh, okay. Because you've got all this experience with Jim. How long have you been involved in that? I actually got started in 2009. So about 15 years now. Oh, wow. Hey, time flies. It does. It does. Okay. I can't believe it's been that long. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good to know. So you've got some good experience on that one. So what inspired you to flip from the um, what estate to mortgage and note investing? What inspired you to flip from the real estate portion more into the mortgage angle? So I, I we've got to go back a little ways. So if you think back, 2007 was like height of the market, right? When everything was, everything was flying high, everyone's feeling good. And uh, it was actually some friends of mine in California had bought some properties out in mostly in the Midwest. So like Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, and uh, they had thought that uh, this was going to be a deal where they just flipped it out to another organization and they'd be done. And then just as the deal was about to go through, the market started to change a little bit and it just, it kind of went a little bit crazy. Uh, and uh, they got caught with these properties that they didn't really know anything about. So I came into the scene in 2008, in the fall of 2008. Uh, because I had done some fix and flip, I had been a landlord and I'd done the rental thing. The thing that I realized is that with the being a rental, like a landlord, um, I liked the cash flow, mm -hmm. but I didn't like anything else. I, I didn't like having to deal with the house. I didn't like, you know, having to go and fix the house up every time somebody left and oh, yeah. all of the things that were involved there. I just didn't appreciate that. It wasn't fun. Uh -huh. And then when I was introduced to this, this new thing where, uh, I could sell these houses kind of like a rent to own. So the person living in the house, instead of being a renter, oh. they were like a prospective owner. Oh. They're making monthly payments with part of that payment going towards the principle of actually paying down the house. And in that way, I got all of the income. That was the part I liked uh, without any of the stuff that went along with that. So I didn't have to take care of the house. I didn't have to fix, you know, the toilet. I didn't have to fix the roof. That's the person living there. That's their responsibility. Because yeah, it's like when you're living there, you have all the responsibility to take care of it yourself for making the right steps. Right, right. So I, I, I liked that a lot. And that was a, a big reason for switching over. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Hey, and that's awesome. Like, you know, giving folks more hopes and everything. <laughs> Just make yeah. Sure, um, because everybody loves, you know, most people do love to own and everything. So if they have the option to own, they can always justify why they're renting for so long because they mm -hmm. just take the steps and help them um, get themselves to become the owner here. So that's right. Because right. renting some of it would actually be some of the investment for some of the mortgage portions of it. Like after they rent for, um, what, I don't know, a whole year, would that start cutting um, some of the ownership parts? Like we're paying, you know, making another. Yeah. Portion. So the way it works now is, um, I, so that was, that's what I was doing before was kind of considered originating. So I was creating these notes. So selling the house on terms, uh, typically we're, we're, selling these houses to people that didn't qualify at the bank, which was great. We were able to provide housing for people that otherwise wouldn't have had the chance to own. Now I've switched up a little bit where um, I'm buying other people's originated notes. So I'll let somebody else do that part of it. And I'm just buying just the mortgage itself. So I don't actually buy the house. I'm just buying the lien, the, the loan against the property. And then the property happens to be my collateral. So that it's a little bit of a different angle to it. So ideally, I never actually want to own the property. I just want to own the, the paper, all of the, the loan documentation against the property. Oh, okay. You're just going to be flipping it around and getting you know, the ownership, the ROI on it when you can hurry up and sell. Yeah. Yeah. So then the person living in the house, I'll tell you one of the things I like the best is uh, 
I'm not a bank. And so if there's ever a situation where the person living in the house, they're having a hard time making payments for all kinds of different reasons. Uh, because I'm not a bank, I'm far more flexible. So over the years, we've been able to help a whole lot of people stay in their homes, continue making payments, uh, where if there was, if it was a situation where the bank owned that mortgage, uh, they probably wouldn't still be living there. They'd probably be out. So that's that's been very re rewarding over the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to love that. Encouraging the year. Okay. Yeah. I look forward to all those um, angles and details. But you're saying that the um, mortgage notes, you know, what's like, um, you were saying you were the owner, that's what it was, and you changed um, the mentality from just becoming the owner and, and re uh, renting that spot out, renting it out there versus now where you're getting them to actually what do a lease and um, promise or, you know, promise making sure that they're going to be purchasing it. So that way they're having that true responsibility portion of it on there. Yeah, so exactly. Refer or getting the, all the rest of us to work on it, um, to work it or to, to do the ROI ourselves. Like was any other tips you have? Want to share with us? So the other thing is there's all kinds of different approaches. So like I say, uh, there's still a lot of people out there that that will buy a property and then sell it on terms. So, you know, somebody else is, instead of being a renter, now they're uh, an owner of the property and they're making a mortgage payment instead of that rental payment, which is fantastic. Then they're, they're homeowners and they have that responsibility to take care of the property. And then as the mortgage holder, uh, that's how I get that return on investment. So it's it's really cool. And like I say, I've changed gears a little bit where I let other people do that origination though. So they will create that note and then I will just buy the note from them. And then, so the reason somebody would do that is let's say they're collecting payments on that note. So they're getting that monthly income. Maybe they have an opportunity for a different investment or maybe they are sending a kid off to college or maybe they want to, I don't know, buy a boat. I don't know what they want to do, but they want a lump sum of cash today instead of those payments over time. So I go in and I say, I will give you that lump sum of cash today. I will then start receiving those payments instead of you. And then they've got their money. And then I'm I'm now the new person receiving those pay, those monthly payments. I it's like, like you're saying it's a monthly payment, but do they have to do a um, <clears throat> down payment to begin with you? Uh, at the very beginning when they're buying the house, typically, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll do some kind of a down payment and then it's whatever that monthly payment is set up. So same thing, right? I mean, so then why is it like, you know, why is it saying renting then? <clears throat> if if they're doing the down payment, that's the same the neat thing that we do for for purchasing it for real. Then why? What's the difference with you? Then I, it doesn't sound like it's a difference because it's just like you know it's not really you're not renting at all. You're definitely paying. So no, that's exactly it. So instead of being a renter, they are now the homeowner. So they living in the house and they their name is actually on title. Person living in the house, they own the home. I'm just providing the financing for them to be able to buy that house. Oh, you're providing the financing. Yeah. So you're yeah. helping more. Oh, you're like you're more helping like the banking area where you'd be helping with a loan portion of it a little yeah. bit better. Yeah, oh, exactly. yeah. No, that's encouraging. Yeah, yeah. it's really yeah. cool. It's a regular it, person it, versus looking for the bank to get the to get the loan. You can get a, a person to help exactly that, um, financing portion of that. Yeah. Well, that sounds very appealing. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's a great business. I love doing it. I love you know being able to help people get into homes when maybe they otherwise wouldn't be able to. That's been great. Wow, that is so inspiring. That is awesome to hear. It's so a lot of fun. Several too. different angles or approaches. Like what's another angle? What would you mean? So um, I know people that buy. So, you know, if you're living in a house and now you've built up a little bit of equity, so the house is worth just breezy numbers. Let's call it a hundred thousand dollars. That'd be a nice cheap house in LA. But anyway, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars and the house is worth. So the, the balance on the loan is a hundred thousand the house itself is worth 150. So now you've got a $50,000 equity chunk in there. Simple numbers, I know, but <laughs> you've got a chunk of equity in there and you can borrow against the equity. So maybe you get a second lien or a, like a home equity line of credit or something like that for 30,000. So then I've got colleagues of mine where they will only buy those second mortgages. So whether it's a, a home equity line of credit or you know a second lien on the property, uh, that's a different approach to the same thing. And, and there's probably don't want to get into all the reasons why or, or, you know, the kind of the intricacies of that, but, but that's just another approach that you can do California, not so much, but other places 
out east, they've got what's called a, a contract for deed, um, where slightly different, the person living in the home, they're not on title yet. So they're making regular mortgage payments with principal and interest. Mm -hmm. And then once they're finished making all those payments at that point, that's when the deed uh, transfers over to them. So there's just, there's a few different it's not approaches. You're saying the deed, so it's not officially that they're doing it, but they are, you know, they know between you and I or whatever, but after yeah. they finish this time scam, that's when everybody else will notice that it's actually official. Right, right. So it's a, a contract for the deed. And so over time, you're you're kind of buying the house in installments. That's kind of the idea with that one. So there's a couple of different approaches, but uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's really fun to get into it. You're saying the East Coast, so how far um, east. Well, mm -hmm. I don't want to say, should I not say the big spot that I definitely watch on the East Coast? It's just that, um, well, of course, New York, where there's some spots in New York or something like that, would that would be available? Um, a little bit further inland than that. So you're talking more like Ohio or Indiana, or if you're going down a little further south, Alabama has the same kind of thing, Louisiana, yeah, Tennessee. There's there's lots of places that do that. Uh, so standard times, so that's not even Eastern standards. That's not. Yeah, standard. right. Yeah. Yeah. That is, but not Alabama and not Louisiana. So those two. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, those, that's why those homes are not at all like the, the three million and the two million that you need in California and Southern Exactly. California. Yeah, that's more like the hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So look for those angles, and that's where you'll be able to get those type of things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense and everything. Ooh, well, that's a good point. So people should just hit you up on your website for help on how to contact you on that one. Yeah. You know, I run an annual conference where we talk all about note investing. People come in and uh, it's very strictly a no pitching event. So if people come, you don't have to hide your wallet. Nobody's going to say, make sure you buy it today. Like there's none of that. It's just strictly education and networking. That's coming up. It's not for a little while. It's not till next May out in Nashville. Uh, and so there's information about that on, on the web website. And uh, if people are looking to invest passively, uh, that's what I do now is, is collect money from investors, put into my fund, and then I go out and buy more of these mortgage notes all over. Okay. Because it says that earnest investing so is clear and obvious that you're going to help on the investing angle. So that's yes. Good. Yeah. Just to just note that we're doing it on the, you know, the smaller the smaller states are the ones that are not going to be quite as expensive. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody's looking to get started on their own and they wanted to do this, you know, going off on their own, you can absolutely do that. Um, it's a lot less expensive than if you were going to buy a property, but I would still plan on at least like 50,000, uh, something like that to be able to buy one of these mortgage notes. But then you're looking at returns of 10 to 12%, somewhere in that range. So it's it's a good return for a relatively small amount of money. Definitely doable. But what was, you said 50,000. So I would, would I be going to the regular bank to get the 50,000 down payment for you? Or would you be helping me get the 50,000 down payment? No, that would be money that you already have uh, that you've you know set aside for investing uh, where you can go and buy one of these mortgage loans and uh, start collecting. So instead of, same thing. Instead of the person living in the house paying the bank, now they're paying you. Oh, easy portion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's why. Okay. Make sure you're saving up to have that and all those fifty thousand to to make an investment. Yeah. Yeah. Which is it's not a small amount of money. I I totally understand that. But it's uh you know relatively speaking, if you're going to go and buy a property, uh you're talking you know minimum depending on where you are hundred thousand dollars plus oh i see i see yeah no big deal okay so what the mortgage you think this um one here is getting more folks to be motivated you know like how do you see the evolving of this one like um more of the folks will be all motivated to follow you know your organization or, or some similar or we'll be able to invest and just do some more things simpler not more simple than the work working with the banks yeah it's 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 a really great community. So there's not a lot of people that do what we do, relatively speaking. So like, for example, at my conference uh, this past year, we had about 225 people. Uh, of those 225 people that are actually active and, and doing this on a regular basis, you know, 50 to 100. So it's a relatively small group of people that do this, um, but it's 
wonderful when we get together and we can, you know, share stories and different things we've learned and, and how to do it better. That's true. It's true stories. I love stories. Like you said, yeah. <laughs> examples are it's critical when I can see a great example from X, Y, and Z. It's like, oh, all these people did it. So please, I'm obviously yeah. going to do it. Anybody can do it. It takes a little bit of education and, and some courage, but anybody can do it. You're motivating me because it's like, hmm, let me see about stating. I don't want to state the spot that I truly want, but let me see about a spot that I can squeeze yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah. Anybody can do it. It's uh, it's definitely attainable. I get it. For good habits that you expect or what would you, ex what would you tell people to do with their new good habits? that you've learned in this time frame and understanding that people can just get into a good habit? Oh, good habits, you know, specifically around business, something that I learned early on when I was doing my first business, 2004, 2005, is um, I set regular business hours. So <laughs> it can be really easy, especially when you're working for yourself. It can be really easy to wake up in the morning and, you know, turn on the computer and, you can be there until 10, 11 o'clock at night and it can just take over your life. And that was, that was part of, yeah, that was kind of happening to me where it was just getting out of control. It was taking over my life. So I now set regular business hours. I'm in the office pretty regularly, nine to five uh, with, you know, some exceptions here and there, yeah. both taking time off and working extra hours, but uh, on the regular nine to five, and then whatever happens after five o'clock, you know, I don't have notifications on my phone, um, nothing like that. And when I leave the office, I'm done with the office. So I'm with my family. We're having dinner together, things like that. I find that's just been a good way to get a good balance in life. Clear, clear. <laughs> Because I, mean, I love, like you're saying, because when you're at the house too long, it just still keeps you in that relaxing comfort mentality. But when you're over there, focus on only doing the office work and over there, that's why the whole different vibe you have when you're yeah. in that other room, which is like, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me. That helps me stay more disciplined. Just like, would you just go ahead and make sure you put your notes and do your angles immediately? Yes. Yeah, And I mean, one thing I've learned is also habits of, yes, proclaiming your victory. Because victory is mine. Victory yeah. is mine. We've got the victory. And I've also been speaking my healing. The healing is on me. And I'm telling you, it has gotten so much stronger. I have gotten so much stronger overcoming my epilepsy and everything. And just seeing how, oh, let me just keep speaking the loving things happening and just expecting it. But yeah. Because things do happen when you least expect it, but it's still hmm, <laughs> nice yeah. to see the, um, other better results. Because even though that you see what you're normally seeing, you just definitely see greater results. Because I tend to say a bigger amount of seizures that I was having monthly, I'm down to less than three seizures a month. And Fantastic. I'm like, oh my goodness, this yeah. is Awesome. So let me just see about. Oh, I love that. That's great. That's great. No, and, and man, that is so important. Celebrate the victories. Absolutely. I mean, and just, but as long as we're, but, uh, you can't be celebrating victories and not doing anything. Yes. And still got to take our steps, right? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's great. Because, yeah, you were just telling us, you know, so we can just go to earnest investing and get everybody to just see the right um, moves that we can move with the organization and everything and see how we can move forward with getting a great, great location and so forth. Because it can be a business or a home. It doesn't have to just be the home. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, feel free to reach out. I'd love to talk to you and answer any questions. Okay. So, hey, that's why I'm all <laughs> excited to see. Let me see about because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the first time home buyers absolutely realize yeah. all the different things with the first time business owners as well, so they can see that yeah, this is a valid one. This is a valid nonprofit business, but hey, obviously great things are coming when you least expect it. Very good for that. I hear you. So hey, get any more things on your heart to share? Anything? Mm -hmm. The good habits and. You know, I think one of the things I've just learned over the years is it's not always easy and there's definitely challenges and there's hurdles, but I think probably one of the most valuable things I've learned is just keep going. There's, there's always tomorrow. Just keep going. 
Amen. No matter what, there's going to be challenges, there's going to be difficulties, and then there's going to be fantastic, wonderful days. So just keep going. I hear you. because We just take our steps of action every single day. Mm -hmm. Keep uh, moving forward. And that's why we get much, much closer and we see the victory must be coming on. Yeah, I'm absolutely. I'm so uplifted. So yeah, it was great talking to you. And I just like your vibe over there, the Canadian, because you were born and raised up there. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been great to be here. That's cool. That's cool. Hey, so I look forward to hearing all the good feedback that you get. And I look forward to, yeah, for you giving me the good steps I can be taking. And we can see how we can just all work together. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. Well, you just have a wonderful week. And hey, look forward to everybody else going over there. Because, yeah, yeah, my website is breakingthecocoon.com, but we have all the good moves that we can just get more folks to just be aware of. So you just have a great, great week, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.